Hello there. Thanks a lot for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard. And boy, this is Louis Armstrong and his all-stars from the mid-century mark of the 20th century playing in a popular nightclub in Los Angeles, California. And this is a pretty early version of his all-stars, his six-piece all-stars. So early, in fact, they were actually called the All-Star Esquire Combo. You don't see that very often. But isn't this just a really handsome, you know, black and red and white uh, concert poster, window card? Really a strong layout, and for that we can credit Woolever Press in Los Angeles. As you can see in the top up there with the bold black printing, typical of boxing style concert posters, it does say opening Friday, February 10th, the Bal Tabarin, a popular night, uh, Los Angeles nightclub, which um, actually drew its name from the, uh, you know, risque Paris cabaret dance hall at the turn of the uh, 1800s to 1900s. Interestingly, still open at this point. It wouldn't close until 1953. And there were also several, you know, bal taverns around the United States which pinched their name from the famous Paris nightclub, this one being on Western Avenue in Gardenia, a Los Angeles little incorporated city. So we've got on here Joe Blazier Presents and, uh, you know, Satchmo's manager who often put himself twice on concert posters and this being no exception. And then you've got the six all-stars. And flanking Louie on the left there first is uh, Earl Father Hines. Count Basie called him, wow, the greatest piano player in the world. But he wasn't so happy being relegated to Louie's side man, so he was an all-star for just three or four years. And on the other side, you've got Jack Teagarden, no less than the father of the jazz trombone. So, my goodness, a couple of real heavyweights on either side of Satchmo there. In fact, they get bigger red lettering, as you can see beneath their pictures, and the other four get more standard lettering. But, of course, they're no slouches by any means. Heavens, you have Barney Begard there. He's a um, clarinetist, and he had played 15 years with Duke Ellington and co-wrote the standard Moon Indigo, popular to this day, on my favorite Frank Sinatra album from 1955 in the wee small hours of the morning. Then you've got Arvel Shaw on upright bass in his second of four stints with Satchmo. And this is such a professionally designed and laid out poster, I'm a little surprised they have a spelling gaff on here. Arvel is supposed to have two L's, but he only gets one here on the poster. Then you've got singer Velma Middleton. She was almost exclusively with Satchmo from the late 40s until 1961. And then in the lower right hand corner, there's drummer Cozy Cole. He was an all star from 1949 to 1953. And then bottom center there, you do have a RCA Victor name check for the record label. <clears throat> Excuse me, then way down on the white bottom margin there, you have booking information and the Wallover Press credit. So this was a tour blank, and I've got the same poster actually to show you from the summer of 1950 from Boston, Massachusetts. And here's an image of that poster from the summer of 1950. Look at that. Boy, the yellow color has been added very effectively, hasn't it? You still have the red and the black and the white, but a lot of yellow dosed in there for the summertime, and it looks really effective. The only other significant difference is the record label down bottom center has been changed from RCA to Decca Records now on this one month later. So, whether it's Decca Records or RCA Records, and whether it's yellow and red and black, or just red and black along with the white, it's a killer 1950 Louis Armstrong and his All-Stars concert poster. Thanks a lot for dropping by today. Nice seeing you. Appreciate your time, and we'll see you again for something else sometime soon. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.